Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanase here. So the real reasons why I'm doing over $7,000 in sales every single day with Shopify. Now this year has also been a crazy year simply because things are starting to go back to normal. What we had never faced before in our life is slowly starting to become a part of our past. And because of that, a lot of the trends, especially with shopping online, have sort of started to return. And that's exactly the reason why I'm able to be doing such numbers during this time period now there's a few things that i'm going to be going over in this video first of all how i'm even able to do such numbers during this time period but also how you can personally start changing some things up with the way you're approaching your shopify dropshipping store with the way you're advertising your products so that you can also start achieving similar number to this because as weird as it may sound it is actually not that difficult to be doing such numbers with shopify or just dropshipping it in general and before you exit out of this video thinking I'm a fake YouTuber and just pulling stuff out of my you know what just hear me out what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and refresh this page so you guys can see that this is actually a real store and not something I just photoshopped for this video so as you guys can see it is currently getting refreshed and right now today so far we have done seven thousand seven hundred twenty three dollars and ninety eight cents it is actually over eight thousand dollars today but some past orders within the past few days did get refunded so that's why it's at about seven thousand seven hundred dollars but what I want to now show you guys is this month for the Shopify store as you guys can see overall if you take this entire number and go ahead and divide it by five I'm, I'm recording this video on May 5th you'll see that it rounds to roughly seven thousand dollars per day in sales definitely not a small number even for me but what I want to now show you guys is just go back a little bit back in time to in the beginning of April when the Shopify store was not really doing about that amount during that time period. So as we can see during the beginning of April, when things were just short of shaky, we were doing roughly 1000 up to $3,000 on a good given day. So what exactly changed? Why was I able to sort of achieve this chart right here? And as you guys can see, it is mostly a linear curve upwards, which is absolutely crazy because this is not something that you really see in e-commerce business. There's a lot of ups and downs, but here I was able to achieve some amount of growth with a few strategies which i'm going to be going over but let's go ahead and go on over to our google doc to see exactly why i'm able to achieve such results the first thing you'll have to do in order to find any type of results with the things i'm about to mention however is to destroy that like button until it turns blue it's going to take just two quick seconds i promise it's not going to take any longer and it'll help me put out more videos just like these ones okay hopefully you have smashed the like button down below but the real reason why i'm doing 7k per day with Shopify. Let's start by talking about the products this time because without products, I'm not going to lie, it would have been impossible to achieve such results. And it doesn't really matter what kind of ad strategy you use or basically whatever else you do. If your products are not on point, you are not going to be able to achieve results like this, let alone any significant profitable results. So exactly what did I do with the products? With this Shopify store, it is a general store and it is the store which I talk about a lot in my other videos as well, especially those relating to Google. But with this one, I did have multiple winning products. As you guys saw for today, I had roughly 57 orders. They were not for a single product, but rather for a multitude of products. So about 10 to 20 different products, all adding up to that number in total. So I had multiple winning products. Each product that is a winning product as of right now ranges from between $50 all the way up to $600. And you guys are not going to believe this, but some of the more high ticket products I'm actually running via Facebook ads. And yes, this Shopify store is currently run on Google as well as Facebook ads. More on that later though. But $50 to $600 is the price range for the products which are actually getting sold on Google on the Shopify store. And that's the beauty about it, running Google ads with Facebook. With Google, mostly I find more success with high ticket. With Facebook, of course, it's gonna lean more towards the low ticket items. But in this Shopify store, I'm actually finding more results with high tickets. We're gonna go over that and go into my Facebook ads dashboard as well very soon. But the products that are actually selling, I noticed, are more season based. Now, what do I mean by this exact? As of right now, when I'm recording this video, it is basically summertime in the United States and this Shopify store is mostly advertised to the US. The main reason why these products are actually selling during this time period is because I chose these products based on the season that we are in, based on the stuff that is going on in the world. And that is why these products started selling. 
For the Google-based products, nothing is different compared to what I teach in my other videos. For instance, one of the main criteria is 25K or more monthly searches. That's something that I'm noticing with these winning products as well. In fact, a lot of these winning products, which are mostly high ticket, have over 100,000 monthly searches. So the more the number, the better it is for you so that you can rank for more keywords. But in addition, a lot of these winning products, I noticed that when I got into these products, there were less than five dropshippers selling that given product. And the main reason why we want to achieve this is so that we're not competing for bits and pieces with other fellow dropshippers. We want to basically own the entire cake. And that is exactly what I was able to do with some of these products. And that is the beauty actually with high ticket. Not a lot of dropshippers have actually gotten the idea of dropshipping high ticket products. They may be scared of dropshipping high ticket, thinking that there are more issues with that, or they may think that it's not even possible to dropship high ticket products. But that is the benefit for people that watch my YouTube videos or just people that dropship high ticket products in general, because that leaves an entire marketplace open for you to come in and basically grab the entire cake before other people start following you. And that is exactly what happened with a lot of these dropshipping products. I was the first one to basically start advertising them. And then once other fellow dropshippers saw that I was advertising that given product and I was a dropshipper, they too started following the bandwagon. But by then, of course, I had already achieved a large portion of the market share and I had already gotten a lot of sales. But in addition, for the Facebook-based products on the Shopify store, because again, I'm starting to run more and more Facebook ads for this product, they were actually high-ticket products, which was a big surprise. I even talked about this in my last video. Go ahead and check that out if you haven't checked that out already after this one. But what I basically did is I found winning products first on Google ads, and then I used those same exact products to advertise on Facebook with image ads only. And this is where the power of image ad has come into play once again. If you guys have been following me for a while since the beginning, you know that my first success was actually via Facebook ads back in 2017, 2018, and I was able to achieve that success via image ads. In the middle, I sort of did lose trust in image ads and, the, and their ability to work really well because of what everybody else was saying regarding Facebook ads and how it was changing. However, I was actually proved wrong with this given product because as you guys are about to see, I was able to achieve tremendous results with high ticket products and that too with image ads. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our Facebook ads account to look at exactly all of the campaigns and how they are performing. So right here, we're looking at the last seven days. Let's go ahead and look at the last 30 because that is basically when I started spending money on this given ad account. So we have spent roughly $18,000 within the last 30 days via Facebook ads. And what I want to show you guys is the overall ROAS for a lot of these campaigns. So right now, of course, the ROAS doesn't look the best, but what I want to do is I want to go inside of one of these campaigns to show you how individual ad sets are actually performing because I did a lot of tests which brought down the ROAS, but because the profit margin is well into the $100, meaning about $110, even a 2.0 ROAS is profitable in this case. But what I want to show you guys is some of the results I got with these camp ad sets. So as you can see, two purchases for $5 per purchase and the overall conversion value is just about $200. So that lets you know that the average order value for this is about $100. Same thing here, eight purchases at $20. And by the way, I could spend up to $100 to get a sale for this given product right here. But I just want you guys to look at the overall ROAS for these ad sets. And these, some of them are currently running as well. So as you guys can see, you're spending about roughly $159 on this ad set to get back about $1,459. So these results are basically only a dream for a lot of Facebook advertisers in today's world. However, I was able to achieve it just because this is a very high ticket product. And what I want to show you guys is the overall budget I'm running these at. So as you guys can see, I started actually advertising at $10 per day budget. So absolutely insane, but it did end up working out. Now let's go ahead and start talking about the exact strategy which I used. What I did is again, I only used the winning product from Google to put them onto Facebook ads, but I launched about 10 to 20 ad sets in total and two to three ad copies per ad set. And that is exactly what I did for multiple different campaigns and multiple different products because in total, roughly addressing about three different products right here within these campaigns. So this is product number one right here and this is product number two. This is product number three and actually four products, not three. So this is product 
campaign number four and all of these have been very very profitable let's go ahead and look inside one other campaign to show you guys exactly what kind of profits and what kind of sales i was dealing with so right here let's go ahead and rank by the roas again well above eight four roas so this is another high ticket product profit margins between 80 dollars to about 120 dollars for this given product so very amazing for facebook ads to be providing these kinds of results in total but i was launching these ad campaigns and testing these products with 10 to 20 different ad sets two to three ad copies per ad set all of them of course image ads and i was launching them at ten dollars a day so nothing literally has changed with the way i test products everything is exactly the same but enough about the actual advertising let's start talking about the exact website layout i had because i started to notice more and more often in 2021 and especially right now is that these certain things really help boost your sales with google or facebook ads in general and these are the following so the first one is you want to have a load speed of less than three seconds with your shopify store if you have anything above a three second load speed you can just about forget getting any kind of decent results with your advertising platform simply because People hate waiting now, especially with Amazon and everything that's going on with the way that the e-commerce world is changing. So because of that, you want to always be focusing on providing a better customer service experience, providing a better website load speed because people hate waiting as of now. In addition, you want to have clear and concise policy pages, contact us pages, about us page, tracking info page and so forth all of these pages need to be fully filled up and fully be detailed basically you don't want to leave any kind of question or confusion up for the customer because if you leave that up they're not going to be purchasing from you and this is not only just for the customers but also to continue selling on advertising platforms like google because if you have it if you haven't already heard or have experience with it google ads has started coming down on drop shippers significantly and they've started to kind of ban out google merchant center accounts just because even if they find any kind of small fault so to kind of avoid that scenario you want to always be providing clear and concise pages but this brings me to the next point which is having easy accessibility all over your website that means don't have a menu where some stuff is missing and then you have the other stuff that is missing in the footer menu or completely leave it out that's simply because if you don't make your website accessible to the customers they're going to think you are a fraud and leave from your website this has become more and more important in these past few weeks and these past few months simply because there have been a lot of advertisers who have just been scamming other people and customers are becoming smart they're becoming aware of these scams so you want to kind of provide the best experience possible in order to achieve such results like the one i just showed you guys but this brings me to the next point on the list and that is regarding advertising what should you be doing regarding advertising to kind of achieve such results here i'm going to be breaking out the step-by-step -step layout which i have for my campaigns which are currently running so let's start with google ads with Google Ads, I, of course, have a hybrid general testing campaign. I literally repeat this over and over in basically all of my Google Ads videos. If you don't even know what I'm talking about, be sure to check some of those out. But this current campaign is running at a bit of 46 cents. Of course, the bid range I recommend is anywhere between 40 cents to 50 cents. That's completely up to you. 46 just works better for my account. In addition, it's running at $410 per day as of right now, spending a little bit over this amount just because Google likes to do that. It doesn't like to spend exactly this amount. It spends less or more. In addition, I'm adding five new products every single day into this campaign. So my data is always fresh. Google always has a fresh batch of products to choose from. So if today five products turned out to be losing products, that's no big deal because today I just added five new ones and the cycle continues over and over. This is how you basically continue consistently growing with your Shopify store. Now with my smart shopping campaign, because yes, I have a smart shopping campaign running, I have set the setting for the target ROAS percentage to 317%. You can set this to whatever you like. I just like to set it above 300%. If you don't set anything up, it kind of defaults to about 200 to 250%. So we don't want that. We want it to be at a decent amount. So I like to keep it at 317. And amazingly, this has been providing me a much, much higher ROAS than 317%, even going up to about a thousand percent, meaning 10 times ROAS on any given day, which is absolutely again amazing. But it's currently running at $122 per day. And the interesting thing about this campaign actually is that I'm actually just adding losing products from my general testing campaign or those products with very low CTRs into the smart shopping campaign. I did not really think this would work. However, the smart shopping campaign has proved me wrong. It has become one of my most profitable campaigns to date and something I recommend for you guys. So simply add the losing products 
or the low CTR products. Of course, nowadays I do add some winning product in here in case that product is not really being scaled successfully with my general testing campaign. But I want to, you want to be adding that every seven to 14 days from the general testing campaign. And in addition, I have one more campaign, which is a shopping campaign, basically the low bid general testing campaign running at 10 cents and it's running at $50 a day. Of course, it doesn't spend the entire budget simply because of the very, very low bid. However, its purpose is to just get you the lost sales. So that's basically it for Google Ads. Nothing too crazy. Let's move on to Facebook. With Facebook, a lot of people like to do crazy things and crazy strategies. Trust me, simple works best and what I used to do in 2017 and 2018 still works to this day. I have three different campaigns and in this case it's actually four as we saw. So four different campaigns for four different products and all of these products actually came directly from Google, meaning these were winning products with Google ads, which I just coincidentally decided to try on Facebook and it was the best decisions of my life because these turned out to be winning products via Facebook ads and that's the only reason why I'm able to scale to such numbers during this time period. But all of these are actually high ticket products, but as I said, low ticket can work best for Facebook, but in my case, as you saw, high ticket was working just fine. And uh, the strategy of how I launched a product, I already went over earlier, so you may wanna kinda go back in this video and watch that section again. But that's basically it for Facebook ads, as this brings me to the final point of this video, which is scale. How do you scale this consistently without basically going crazy or going bankrupt in the process? Because a lot of people think that scaling is just cookies and cream, and it's the best time of your life. It can definitely be the best time of your life if you're scaling the right way and that too profitably. In my case, since I've been doing this for so long, it is not too difficult to scale profitably, but a lot of people fail with this. The number one thing that I would recommend and the number one thing I'm doing right now for scaling is using eBay and private agents and AliExpress, especially the ships from USA option. This has allowed me to scale consistently because if you guys see on the screen, my return customer rate has been significantly higher than before. And that's simply because I'm using these three websites to do my sourcing for the products. People are getting their products that they ordered with, within a very, very short period of time. So they're becoming returning customers, buying multiple things from my Shopify store. And that is exactly how you scale your store. You don't necessarily have to scale by increasing the budget or by doing anything crazy like that. All you can do is simply provide better service, provide faster shipping times, and that can do more than enough to scale you from doing about a thousand to two thousand dollars a day to five to even ten thousand dollars per day. But if you're looking to get any more help with Google Ads specifically, I do offer one on one Google Ads mentoring where we start from the beginning and go step by step on how to achieve such results like I'm doing right now. But if you find any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.